Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and um, this is a special occasion right now so I thought to take a bit of a bit of footage of this because this is the first project ever that I had to strip out um, especially in such a short time we knew it from day one that this system wouldn't be in this car for long this is the E63 AMG um, we built in 2018 July so not a long time ago a bit more than two years we started planning it around March April then we got around fitting the system in July and the owner is now changing to a new car so next year we will have a new project which is fantastic but it's quite sad to strip the system out because this setup was just mega crazy just like the car it matched the car beautifully so I run through it quickly for you because many of you I think couldn't even see what was put into this um, because the video I shared of this car was banned worldwide quite many countries because we played music in the background and copyrights completely banned it it was crazy so um, all right factory head unit we completely bypassed it we didn't use that at all that I got many many uh, question marks for but because it's only an mp3 player we refused to use it so the factory system as such was running parallel with the aftermarket system it was still you know doing the navigation phone calls anything like that but for music playback we just ditched it we could have integrated it on speaker levels but also when when you do that and you play music through your depth or anything you would have to change inputs anyway or if you contact connected anything to the factory head unit and if you have the setna running at the same time then it would always fade your volume and it would speak over your music listening so it would it would it would be annoying so this way it was also easier actually to now turn the car back to factory because we don't have to have too much with that we just have to change the mid base driver because we had the factory location each side in the firewall and we fitted hybrid audio l8 se dust cap version drivers in the firewall which were the, the best part in the whole system it's so clean so tight accurate zero level of vibration or rattle so that will be very difficult to replicate in the new car or in any car really so when people ask me you know what car should we buy for a good audio there you go buy an e-series or any mercedes with big large mid base in the firewall you will have little issue with the rattles so um as you could see so that was our mid base in the system and then we had custom pillars so this way we can just rip those out and then put in new pillar trim panels and the car will be pretty much back to factory up front um, then we had the director for the helix dsp pro fitted there which was very easy to to control because when you drive you just had to reach down and, and turn the volume so it was very easy to handle and then that's a different depth the customer has the x5 gen 3 but i just put in a um, m11 for now to con con connect it for the last last listening session for ourselves with nick because we're stripping it um, but we created the 3d printed bracket there there's a magnetic piece on the underneath this panel and actually it should be in here if i'm not right that's it oh actually you can see a lot of money is you know sticking into it because there's a really strong magnet in it so this piece just got hooked up there like that the player could sit in it plugs at the bottom and it was strong enough to hold the player like that so he worked pretty well although he said that he got too comfortable and he was just using his phone for streaming directly to the hack bt module to the helix dsp so easy easy life but this was the front end we didn't have any rear fill in the car nothing like that we only had three way up front and actually let's go here i don't even remember how i can tip the seats it's probably from the back but we should be able to look through the ski hatch no we don't do that we have to tip the seats so i will show that to you a bit later because then we go to the trunk this is where we had proper madness actually nick i'm gonna pull the lever then you can tip the seats so we can show it later <clears throat> is the light on up front in now at the subs is the light on yeah 
Okay, happy days. So, at the back, we had this huge MPREC for four of the Zepco Z400.2 APs. <clears throat> yeah, it's an absolute overkill. Many people argued why we needed, <clears throat> sorry, um, so big amplifiers for tweeters and mid-range as well. For the mid-bass, it's understandable, um, and for the subs, again. Um, and I tried to convince the owner that we, we would have been fine with a six channel for the front end and just two channel for the rear, for the subs. Um, but he insisted on, on this layout. He comes from the 90s. He had systems back then when he, he liked big separate amplifiers with a lot of headroom. And he wanted it. So I couldn't convince him, so we went for it. And to be fair, I don't regret it because we had so much clean power, so much headroom. Yes, you may only use 10, 20 watts for you know tweeters and mids, but that, that was not a single drop of distortion in this system just like you know why do you need 600 horsepower in a car like this do you need it on the road you don't but you have it and when you want to floor it it does things that no other other cars can really do so as such yes this system matched the car really well um, so every single amplifier was running a pair of speakers bass uh, mid bass mid tweet we had the same beautiful churn of plugs in it that I used in the latest BMW GT I showed to you. We had four fans in each corner. So one side was uh, blowing the air in and then the other side was pulling out. So we had a nice circulation. You can see the vents over there where the fans could pull the air in and push them out. The owner didn't have any problem with overheating except once when wife <laughs> loaded everything onto the, onto the vent. And um, yeah, probably the sub-amp, I think the sub-amp went into heat protection, but that was the only occasion in two years. Because um, the, the rack is completely um, unsealed, is that the word? Concealed? Sealed. Sealed. Um, so we had perfect um, circulation. We tested it with a, an ECD cigarette and you could see the you know the, the smoke going in and it was coming out on the other side it looked really cool but i can't replicate that right now um so that was the amp layout and then we have the acoustic elegance ib15 au subs that i use quite often from the us by john john builds them and they are beautiful sounding subs and they are quite capable if someone says that they need more bass than what these are capable then they are pure bass heads then they, they i don't know they have to change their mind because this setup had a, an extra 10 dB headroom over the front end and it was actually testing the <laughs> structural integrity of the whole car so they are very capable so each was running on each channel of the 400.2 on four ohms so 400 watts for each which was more than healthy for these subs because for IB upper base you may need more power but the lower you play the less power you need because of the impedance rise um, so it was very efficient as well as such, even if we had big amplifiers. But it was a nice and simple layout. You can see black perspex there. Those panels hide the bolts holding the panel in place. So it was pretty easy to strip it out. And then that little piece is mag magnetic. I can't even put it away. So that piece is there when the, the rack is tipped. Then this comes away. And then after that, it can be just pushed back magnet box it and it's really difficult to put it out because now we can lift it and I show what's underneath Nick lifts it up so that's where we have the, the rest of the kit which is hard to show now because there's not much light down here but that's where we have the DSP power distribution uh, LED controller then um, controller for the fans yep struts signal cables a lot of stuff but everything was bought, uh, built in in the way that we can put it back to factory and that's now the job um, that's the air tank for the suspension the extra battery hold it hold it for a sec that's where we have the second battery fused and it goes into the distribution uh, where also the main charge from the front comes into so yeah, we had another 60 amp hour AGM battery here at the back and there's one AGM at the front and we have no 
power related issues with the charge or anything in the car so it was nice and simple but yeah those two struts were highly needed because this wreck is probably around 50 kilos so a good like 110 pounds roughly pretty heavy so now you see that panel slid as it was lifted up push it back that's it and it hides everything and we had a cover panel for the top of the perspex a trim panel so he could use the trunk on a daily basis and protect the glass and considering you know it was used now for two years properly it's you know once it's it's hoovered and vibed it's still a showpiece that's why i'm feeling pretty shit right now to take it out because unless we find someone with the same car where we could utilize the build at least uh, even if they wanted different amplifiers they could they could use the rack for mounting the the ib wall otherwise it's going to be bent sadly so let's go here and then you can see the ib subs from this side now once the seats are tipped um, so that's why we had the 215s many people ask me how we could generate enough output with these if the seats are tipped up and it's still very very efficient it gets through the seats um, but uh, if he wanted to go for madness then he could tip one of the seats and then he had more enough output i'm gonna put uh, a video into the description guys where you can see a test in my father-in-law's honda actually where i did test how the seats affected the subs um, there's a proper test showing every single option when the tag gate is open shut one or two seats open or shut and even with seats up they, they play really nicely also in the description you will find another link to this car where this car is playing music the video which was banned worldwide so i'm not too sure whether you can actually watch it um, it's not easy to play music that copyright doesn't screw up so yeah this is this is pretty much it about it and i'm probably i will finish this video once it's all cleared out and then you can see everything put back to factory and you will never tell that this car had a proper sound system in it other than yeah the soundproofing is going to stay in it which helped a lot on the road we measured it back in the day although i've never shared that footage i, I may have it somewhere but whether i can find it or I'll find time to share it i don't know but it reduced a good 610 db under 200 hertz from the road noise and it's still not a quiet car with these wheels and, and this engine when you cruise it's all right you don't have to turn the music up high you can still enjoy it but as soon as you go mad yeah you can't take the exhaust or anything so all right let's let's do this trip and then you will see what what it's like after just a quick video to show the progress of this trip yeah many cables had to be taken out in order to lift the the whole rack out battery is out it was bought it to a rift nut in the floor you can see the deadening now but everything else was trimmed down here to make it black and um, the rack goes down easy with the um, so as you can see there was not much space in there over at the back speakers cable cables uh, had to slide out and then you just have to take the hinges out struts off and the whole rack can lift out and then after that the buffer comes out which is held in place with four bolts from the inside of the cabin i'll show that in a sec um, and that's where the sides are blocked out sealed from from the cabin so the trunk is completely isolated from from the cabin that's pretty much it no no magic a bit of self adhesive carpet here and there hiding little things that the trim panel which was in front of it didn't hide and um, there you go let's take the torch room and then you can see the bolts up front so this is where we have one bolt down there and um, there are bolts up there one each side and then one each side at the bottom and that's what holds the whole structure of the subs into place on the sides where we had a little bit of a cavity that's how the slack of the cables could hide but all the cables were nicely cable tied running in the car into those plastic boots all the way so that will be funky to pull out but it is what it is 
But anyway, you can see the whole build of this. In the description, I, I added a link for you guys so you can see every single step how this car was built two years ago. It will make a bit more sense then. Just because many people were worried how on earth we fitted that there in front of the pedal and it freaks people out. So now as, as I'm taking it out, I thought to show it to you guys. That's the factory location where the speaker is mounted the other way around with the magnet inside of that hole. Although it's a very shallow factory driver. And we were, what we wanted to use was something more capable. And there's a decent amount of distance from the pedal and the bracket also clears the magnet so when it gets pushed in i can't push it in now because it's quite tight but the pedal is a good you know 10 mil away when it gets pressed down completely so it was well tested when we did it speaker is not in the way but yes it's it's super tight so now that is coming out factory driver is going back all the wires have to come out they were all cable tied nicely up all the way everywhere going to the pillars and here in the cable trunks these are packed with factory cables so many cables that if something goes wrong in these cars i think yeah engineers can can struggle a bit to find what the problem is but yeah everything was was running neatly inside that's why it also took that long to do it properly so that's what you have behind the driver and the chassis rear goes all the way to the front. Oh, if I can show it. It's a good meter long all the way up front, but, but the factory hall is, is quite restricting. Um, and between the two layer firewall, the air escapes elsewhere as well. But now when, when I was taking the speaker out, actually, I realized that there's quite high tension on the driver, like as if it was in a small sealed box. Uh, I didn't quite notice it when, when we installed it. It was still playing down to 60, 70 hertz, really nice and tight. Um, so maybe a, a driver that has TS packs more suitable for a small box application, they could yield better and get lower extension. But we were also looking at cutting that, that piece of metal and, and extending that hole, making it bigger because it's very small. Um, but the owner opted out on that it worked fine at least there was no vibration no rattles which is which is king that's that's the most important part in any installation with mid base really so this is it guys this is the, the final drive for this car uh, we are taking it back this is my camera camera person right now um yeah i didn't have a chance to to show you the truck what it's like after we stripped everything out but to be fair there's no point it looks exactly how it came in two and a half years ago it's completely stock um, we got everything out of it no one could ever tell what was in it really all the soundproofing stayed in but that makes the car nice and quiet even now we are doing 70 miles an hour what's allowed in UK on the motorway and it's pretty quiet because the road surface is pretty good um, and here in the in the cabin we only, only had to change the, the eight pillars and that was it. You know, the controller came out, the cop that went back here in the middle. It looks completely standard. As if, you know, there was nothing there before. So, it, it definitely helps when you have a car where you have great mid-base locations. And you can get great results without chopping off the door, uh, building enclosures or building kicks or anything like that. So when people ask me, you know, what car should they get? Um, these new Mercedes platforms are great with the mid-base in the, in the firewall. You can do really well with them because ultimately there's no resonance, there's no rails, there's no nothing. Um, and that's that's king as I mentioned earlier as well uh, when I showed the, the kick location in this car. And um, BMW works well as well, but then as I showed in previous cars, previous BMW wheels, you just need a very capable mid-range with those cars. Whether you use the factory location with the four-inch driver or you build a pillars, where yeah, it's, it's a bit more difficult to, to put you know three and a half four-inch mid-range drivers up on the pillar in most BMWs. Uh, but you can work around it without major customization. You know, you don't have to cut up the car to bits to get great sound. It's when 
when, when you see me and, and many others on forums, you know, cutting off the cars to bits, going mental, you know, doing custom dash, uh, cutting the kicks and cutting the floor. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's much fun, and you can you can do great things. But for everyday users, you just want a great sounding car that has great staging. You don't have to do, go to that extent. If you have a mid base in the door, you know where I stand with that. You need a lot of work. You need enclosures to hear rattles and, and vibrations. Other than that, you don't have to go crazy. And just like this car, many people were like, you know, this is Jesus. This is a huge waste. Why would you have uh, such a system for two years, two and a half years, and then strip it out? Yeah, honestly, I, I felt pretty bad after the first day when we got everything out of the trunk. Um, it's a bit like, you you know, you, you're a painter and you paint something beautiful and then you have to rip it to, pick it to pieces, you know, and you have to pin it. It, it doesn't feel good because to me, building great sounding systems it's it's not just like putting speakers in get the money into the business and then off you go you never see the customer again those people who know me they know that it's, it's more than that and when people say you know this was a waste in this car as well no it wasn't because the owner of this car enjoyed every single day spending in this car you know he works hard when he goes home he can't he can't enjoy music or anything like that then he has to deal with the family but when he's in this car every day he drives an hour that's it that's what he wants he wants the performance of this monster he wants the best sound quality and what should he wait for for the moment when he can keep a car for 10 years but he's not going to do that he, he works hard enough to be fortunate to change cars every three four years because he can afford it that he doesn't have to worry about the maintenance, you know, the crazy cost that can come with high performance cars when, when they get to a certain age. You know, so far he hasn't had a single issue with any of his cars within three years, the lifespan, and he just moved the sound system. It definitely helps when we, we work on a car which has a great platform and we don't have to do much custom work, uh, like in the next one, because the next one of, of, of his car is gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a Porsche Taycan which is a beautiful car, but, you know, for audio, it's not a simple one. So, it's gonna be an interesting project, you will see, but well, I'm gonna share everything from that too, when we get to that next year. Um, so, I don't know, I don't know what else I can say about this project, uh, but I wanted to show it to you, because I, I know that many people didn't see this car before, but go to the description, then you can see it in the build log for, for this, for this system, what was in it. Uh, go on Facebook as well, you can see all the pictures, the build pictures in the photo gallery, as well as the last pictures I took of this car. And then you get an idea about what we do and why we do it. Um, but yeah, this is this is the end of, of a big chapter. The first one for us to shipping, to strip, you know, a big build out. Um, 33 days went in between three of us, me, B, and, and leave from Platinum um, and it's four days to strip it out which which we completed in two days between me and Nick together um, and then yeah we get on to the next project to, to make someone happy to enjoy every single mile on the road you know and enjoy music because the factory system in this is just horrendous I rather turn it off to be fair <laughs> so that's it guys subscribe to the channel because then you don't miss the next one uh, feel free to share it, comment as usual, usual and then I'll bring the next video as soon as I can. Take care.